Hey, what's up? My name is Mike Acosta from BPM Sounds. And in this Sounds Sessions video, we're gonna be talking about transitional effects. So this could be for a DJ mix. And as you're going from one song into another, sometimes you may wanna add some transitional effects that help the song cross over into the next a bit smoother. Uh, this also works really great for music production as well. As you go from one section of a song into another, sometimes transitional effects really help with the emotion and really help bring in the next change in that song. And so that's what we're gonna cover today is how to create those transitional effects using some very, very simple methods, like just a crash cymbal. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in this Ableton session. I'm gonna play this uh, track for you really quick, and you'll be able to hear how it goes from this one section into the actual drop section. Okay, so you can see right here in this section here, there aren't any transitional effects or anything. It just goes from kind of this one part and then all of a sudden the drums and the 808 bass comes in. So in this section, I'd like to use somewhat of a transitional effect that helps bring a little bit more impact and kind of makes your ears pay attention as the song is about to change. So as you can see right here, I have a crash symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that. And I'm gonna let this play, and now you'll hear this with the crash symbol added in. Okay, not much of a big impact. It just adds a little more to it, but I still wanna have a transition that goes from this section and helps bringing it into that section where the crash hits. So the easy way to do this is we're just gonna use this same crash so I've duplicated on a track here, and let's go and solo this section here. And if I play it, so that's the crash. Very simple, short, and dry. So the first thing that I wanna do is select it, and we're gonna wanna turn on the warp marker. And now what I can do is put my cursor right here at the end of the region, and if I press on the shift button, see that little arrow that pops up? And now I can drag this out. So what I wanna do is I wanna extend this crash. And what I wanna do also on the bottom here is we're gonna turn the warp mode and use the complex pro algorithm. So the next thing that I wanna do now is let's reverse this sample. Okay, we're gonna reverse it. And now, okay, so now it's in reverse. Very simple, easy thing to do. And then what I'm gonna do is I am adding a reverb uh, to this. So if we turn on that reverb now. Okay, so there's an effect on there. On the reverb, you wanna actually go down here and extend the decay time a little bit. And you wanna make sure that your wet and dry mix is 100% wet. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this track, all right? And now that we've frozen that, we're going to use the flatten function. And we can get rid of this section here. And now this is what we've got. All right, and now what we'll do is we'll take this and we're going to reverse it again. So we're gonna flip it back. And we're gonna just simply place it right before the actual crash. There we go. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is let's crank up the volume on this so we can get a little bit of gain there. And now let's play that. Okay, so we've got some effects happening there and that's just part of it. We've got some more to do. So the next thing that we want to do is let's go into Ableton's effects section. And the first thing I want to do is grab the auto pan. Okay, we're going to add the auto pan here. And under the auto pan, we're going to turn the amount all the way up to 100. But what we want to do is we want to change the LFO rate. And we're going to switch this over so that the LFO is synchronized 
to the tempo of our track, which is 105 BPM. So what we want to do is we want to go and add some automation to this. So what we're going to do is we'll start this at a really fast rate. Let's say 164. And then we want it to end on a half note. Let's do a quarter note there. And then if we hold down the option button, we can then apply a curve right here to the automation envelope. And so now when we play this, okay, really, really simple stuff. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a reverb after our auto pan. And I'm going to cut a little bit of the lows. And what we're going to do is set the decay time again to about three seconds. Not too much. Stereo all the way, set our quality to high. And what I want to do now is I want to automate the actual dry and wet mix on the reverb. So I want it to start fairly low here. And then I want it to open up and go more towards the wet mix. And then we'll just have it kind of tail off. So now we have the auto pan automated and we've now automated our reverb wet dry mix. So this is what it sounds like so far. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some bit reduction. So we're going to use Ableton's Redux. We're going to drop that in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to automate the down sample. So Redux will start here. And I want this to kind of crank this up a little bit more. And let's switch it off right there. All right. One last thing that we want to do is let's add an EQ at the end here. And so what we want to do is we want to roll off all the low end. We don't really need all the low end uh, frequency in this. So I am going to use a very steep curve and we're going to roll this up. Let's take a look. And then what we'll do is we're going to bump it up on the high end here. I'd say around, let's say 8K. All right, so let's listen to everything in context. I have the same exact track here of what I just did, uh, the final crash effects. And you can see here that all of the automation is there. So let's say we've got auto pan reverb. So let's look at Redux. So we have the Redux automation here. We have the auto panning automation here. And we've got the reverb wet dry mix here. The same exact thing that we just did is all set up here with our levels. Um, the only difference is here is on the mixer section, I am also sending uh, a full auxiliary send over to another reverb and to the delay. So the difference is like, sounds like this. Okay, it's got a nice delay on it. And that will transition nicely into the section where the drums come in and where the crash hits. So let's listen to all of that in context so that we can see what it sounds like. All right, so there you have it. A simple transitional effect that we created using just a simple crash symbol. We took it, we stretched it, added some effects, automated a few things, and boom, there we go. We didn't have to use a synthesizer or anything. It's pretty simple and it's using all of the stock Ableton Live 10 plugins. So hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video. My name is Michael Costa from BPM Sounds and thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below so that you're always up to date 
with all of our latest videos and tutorials.